I'll always have warmth in my heart for those days. A simple way of life, the beauty of nature, friends, respect, love. Those were some of the best of times when I was little, deep in the green mountains for miles. I sometimes cry recollecting them, living like a human, accompanied by voices, beginning to get the faintest idea who I was, learning patience, learning about human fear and judgment. Soon I would be gone, long gone from there, and not to return. Chapter 3 Oakland, California, ten years on, the voices no longer in my head. Asleep on the passenger side of somebody's van, I woke up to neon light showering down upon me at the corner of Grand and Lake Park Avenue. I knew then and there I had arrived. The electric light they always talked about, day and night, incessant light. I looked up through the glass to a marquee raping the Republican Party in a Twitter-length one-liner rip. Something about voting fraud and the theft of the American election. I squinted in the light and turned my head to catch the blood-red neon lettering in its entirety. I really would have laughed. I would have. Problem was, I had not a clue where I was. No clue whose dirty-ass van I was sitting in. Or why my head hurt. Or how I got here under the neon light pissing down, the smell of leather and tobacco in the air. No damn clue about anything, except that my life was clearly derailed and a strange new movement, perhaps a nocturne, was rooted in the base of my spine and branching out like a tree in fast forward flash photosynthesized heroics. I began to lose my breath and could not catch it. The air felt frozen against my face, and my eyesight suddenly became so sharp I could read the street sign a hundred yards up the hill leading on to the highway, Santa Clara Avenue. I repeated it to myself. There was no reverberation, no echo, no nothing. Just my crystal clear voice in an otherwise empty head. The voices had left me to my lonesome. I went for the door handle, but there was none. I went to roll the window down, but there was only a star-shaped cylinder. Hey, I cried aloud and turned as if to claw my way back behind the torp nylon of the navy blue upholstery of my seat. And as I began to move, got caught with a steady cross-check of a forearm in my neck, and my ass hit the metal floor and my back beat against the side of the seat, and the forearm pressured me there while the cars behind us let go on their horns. The light's green, I somehow squeaked out, my eyes blinking up in rapid succession, the green light coming in from the windshield like a fog against the neon. Are you going to sit still, someone said in a voice that was vaguely familiar, because we can wait here all day if you want. I could barely nod my head, but he felt my chin coming down on his forearm and let up the pressure just enough that I could see. Our eyes were wide aperture in the semi-light of the Oakland night. He had my undivided attention. I saw something there in his eyes which helped me slow down and relax slightly. There was someone who cared about something behind those eyes. Lord only knows what. All my lonesome, happy, nappy head could think was, I am no longer alone. Chapter 4 The entire line of cars pushed around us, generous on the horns, his eyes locked with mine the entire time. Getting to know you, generous with the eyes. Once the tacit understanding was between us, he pulled his arm back, grabbed the stick, and stuck it in first.